you know, despite the title of the book, I was surprised how little it talked about food. Hello and welcome to Pillars of Wealth Creation, where we talk about creating financial success with a special focus on business and real estate. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. Now, let's get to it. Hey, real quick before we get started, first of all, I wanted to thank everybody for joining us on the show and for listening uh, to all my loyal listeners. I really appreciate you, uh, you know, continuing to listen and support the show. If you can go on to iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, wherever you listen and subscribe to the show, that would be fantastic. Spread the word too. I'd love to, you know, have this reach more and more people. So if you could share it on social media or, or, or and just talk about it to other people, that would be fantastic. And the last thing is if you can go on to iTunes and give us a rating review, uh, hopefully five stars, that would be great as well. It just helps us spread the word more and it helps us get continue to get uh, really good guests on the show. We've had some fantastic guests and I just want to be able to continue to bring fantastic value to you. Go on to our Facebook page too, Pillars of Wealth Facebook page. And I'd like to hear from, from you as a listener of you know, what you're doing in business, what you've got going on, what you are maybe struggling with or uh, being successful with, and then what we can do on the show to help push you to that next level. Maybe uh, questions we can ask our guests, maybe guests that we can get on the show to talk about certain topics, certain things that are really neat, you're needing uh, some, some extra support with. So provide for us some feedback on Facebook, um, and you can also share this out on, on social media. That would be fantastic as well. I appreciate it. I appreciate you being a uh, being a either new listener or a loyal listener. I definitely appreciate it. And we will get started with the show. Welcome back to another edition of Hump Day Hustle, the show where we focus on business and real estate as our core pillars of wealth creation. My name is John Stiles with Bridge Realty. I'm excited for another great episode. Today we're going to be doing another book review and the book we're talking about today is called Never Eat Alone. And uh, with that, here's our host, Todd Dexheimer. Todd, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, John. Uh, yeah, Never Eat Alone with like with Keith Ferrazzi. It's a great book. I've, I've listened to it on Audible, I think three times. I listened to it one time completely um, sitting in a deer hunting stand for several days and just listened to that book. And then I've listened to it, I believe, at least one other time, but I think twice since. Uh, just a lot of good content in there. Um, you know, a lot of it's pretty basic, but a lot of good reminders too. Yeah, for sure. It's it's a longer book. I think 31 yeah. chapters. Yeah, and it definitely takes a while to get through on Audible. I have not read the hard copy. Did you read the hard copy or did you do the Audible? No, I, I really, it's hard for me to sit down and focus on reading. So yeah, definitely <laughs> listening while I'm driving around. So. I was talking, talking about, I was at a conference, or not a conference, a, a meetup yesterday. And uh, after we went and got a couple uh, drinks and that's what everybody there was laughing about is we, we say we read so many books in a year. Uh, but a, a lot of us aren't necessarily reading or listening to at least half of those books that we claim to have read. So uh, uh, Audible's definitely been a, or, or whatever you use, I'm sure there's other apps out there, but uh, definitely having these books that you can listen to um, are, you know, very valuable. I remember listening to uh, CDs and tape decks of, of books too back in the day, but I don't even know if you can, you definitely can't get a tape deck probably anymore. Probably be challenging. I don't know where you would put it, quite frankly. <laughs> right, right. So. so anyways, well, let's dive into it. Um, there's four main sections to the book that I saw. Uh, the first is mindset. Mm -hmm. So why don't we just discuss that one first here. Um, and uh, one of the sub points of that section it says real networking is about finding ways to make other people more successful. Yep. Yep. I, 
I think that was a really key throughout the whole book is just changing your mindset. So, you know, when you go to a networking event or just in general, if you're, as you're trying to connect with people, you know, if your goal is to see how can you build yourself up, how can you make yourself great? You're not going to find as much success as if your goal is to help other people. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it starts with what can you do for other people, not what they can do for you. And so truly the best, uh, you know, networkers, if you want to call them networkers, are, are to the people, the relationship builders are the people that when you see them, when you hear them, you know, you, you feel like they care about you. Um, and that's going to make a big difference and, and not that they're just there to suck the life out of you or, you know, get information from you. They're going to bring you solid information. You know that they add value to your life and you're willing to then add value to their life. But first and foremost, the people that are really good at building relationships are always looking to add value to other people. Yeah, for sure there's a, you really get drawn to somebody who, if they're asking questions about you, um, you know, what's going on in your life and then responding with that. Well, you know, giving you some advice, giving you some connections, you know, providing value that's really related to what it is that you're focused on. So if, yep. if, likewise, if you can do the same for others, that's, that's really a great way to go about it. The other thing I thought was was good, and I, I think it'd be falling under kind of this category, um, is, you know, he talks about finding or, or building relationships prior to even having something to offer um, and not just waiting until, you know, let's say you, you've got, uh, well, in my business, you know, yeah, I, it's real estate and I have to bring investors into my deals or, or want to, um, well, don't wait until you get a deal to start building those relationships, start building those relationships right away, bringing value to them. Um, and then when you actually get a deal and have an offering, now you've already built those have trust and it's a lot easier to get people to come on board and, and trust you and want to be part of what you're doing. So, uh, same thing if you're selling anything, whatever you're doing, uh, building those relationships first, start finding your, 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 you know, your future investors or whatever first before you have a, something to give them. Yeah, definitely. Because when you are in the position where you need that, that investor or that employee or that job offer, whatever it might be, you know, it's, it's almost too late if, if you're going to try to build a relationship at that point, because it's then, then it's very transactional. Yeah. I need this. Yeah. You, you can give this to me or whatever it might be. Yeah. So the next section w talked about skill sets and there's, there's a lot of different details in there, but um, one point that he, he had was never disappear. So, you know, after you've created those relationships, you got to stay in touch with people. You got to intentionally follow up. And I think, I think it was him who called it pinging people, you know, even if you're not having a, a deep conversation, at least let them know you're still alive. Don't disappear. Yeah. Um, you know, and along with that is, uh, you know, follow, follow up. Um, he talks a lot about following up with people. He talks, uh, you know, about you know, following up with even the people that introduce you, um, to somebody else. And, you know, again, adding value, which goes back to kind of the point one, but, um, you know, an email or, a, a really anything, um, you know, phone call, um, even a handwritten letter, uh, sometimes, you know, the uh, uh, corny, corny is sometimes good, you know, um, corny is bold. And I think he talks a little bit about that too, is uh, being, being bold. Don't just do things like everybody else does. And so if you're going to write this 
you know, write a handwritten letter. That's, that's kind of maybe a little bit of corny, but it also stands out. Yep. Um, another thing in this section that I thought was interesting was he talked about the power, the social power of having acquaintances and that, um, you know, there's different, rings or, or levels of our relationships. We have our close friends, we have our acquaintances. And and sometimes we think about those acquaintances as not very important. You know, they're just people that we casually know. But the thing about it is those acquaintances have their own networks. And you know, by na by that nature, they're outside of your network. So there's a there's a big power there of of staying in contact with those acquaintances um, so that you can kind of exponentially grow your own network. Yep, absolutely. Um, how about the gatekeepers, right? He talks about the gatekeepers and he, he mentions, you know, basically think of the gatekeeper as um, maybe, maybe the secretary or, um, you know, essentially someone that's, keeps track of scheduling and uh, essentially doesn't allow you to reach the person you're wanting to reach in the first place. And he you know, talks more about this as like you're, you're trying to talk with maybe a CEO or somebody of, of, of importance, again, that has people below them that are keeping track of their schedule. And he, so he talks about the power of actually building relationships with the gatekeepers and making sure you respect the power that the gatekeepers have. And he talks quite a bit about how much power the gatekeepers truly have and that when you try to sidestep them, the only thing you're doing is putting yourself in more of a, of a risk of not ever getting in contact with the person you're trying to get in contact with. So he talks about going through the gatekeepers and really, you know, being treating them good, treating them kindly and, and uh, building the relationship with the gatekeepers themselves. Yep. I think an example of that in my own business is uh, property owners sometimes have property managers as their gatekeepers. You know, I would like to talk to the owners uh, to see if they want to buy or sell, but sometimes my first point of contact is the manager mm -hmm. uh, and, and they don't want to always pass on the message or, you know, make the connection. So yep. definitely got to get on their good side. Yeah, absolutely. And, and if, if you're just going to try to, you know, basically say screw you to the property manager or whoever the gatekeeper is, um, I, I, I want to talk directly to the source. That's going to get you nowhere in the end. Hey, we're going to take a quick break and I want to mention a few things. First of all, I've been doing some coaching and I want to continue to kind of expand that slowly and, and take on a few clients. And, and up until recently, I didn't really believe uh, in coaching and, and uh, you know, taking courses and stuff like that. But I recently, or I shouldn't say recently, it's been, it's been a, a few years now, hired a, a coach and saw a immediate results and have been very happy with it and decided, you know, as my teaching background, I wanted to do some coaching myself and help other people get the results that I was able to achieve. And so if you're at that point where you think that's the spot for you, or maybe you just want to explore if it's right for you, uh, you know, reach out to me, I'd have a free discovery call with you. We want to make sure that it is the right step for you to take. There might be other things that you can do to get success uh, and coaching might not be it, but let's have that discovery call to find out if that is uh, the step that you need to take. So it can really make a major impact in your business and get you to that next level. Uh, the other thing is John Stiles. He's on this show every single week uh, with me on the Hump Day Hustle. And John Stiles is a real estate agent in, in Minnesota, and he will help you find a good, good investment property. John is very knowledgeable and can help you find an investment property. It can also help you sell your investment property. So reach out to John Stiles with Bridge Realty and uh, connect with him. He'll 
also, you know, consult with you and, uh, and make sure you guys are the right fit. So uh, give him a call if you're in Minnesota, reach out to him. Uh, he'd love to help as well. Back to the show. Section three t was titled or, or about turning connections into compatriots. So one of the points within that was finding out what motivates people, you know, um, and recognizing people's importance, make them feel important. Yeah. I mean, for sure. I mean, uh, obviously that's, you know, again, when people, when you're building those relationships and, and you're create, having those relationships, if people feel important, if they, if there, there's an energy, right. Uh, that you have when you come into a room and if the energy is that you're provide, you're bringing the energy to the room, you're not sucking it away. People are going to be more attracted to you. If you help pe people feel important, if you're sensitive to them, um, if, if you think about them first before yourself, that's going to actually flow through and, and they're going to feel that. And so, um, yeah, it definitely is going to lead to a lot more su success. Uh, a point in there is indispensable. And primarily he talked about this, I think through being a, a knowledge broker, you know, sometimes, uh, people try to hang on to knowledge and, and, you know, you could sell knowledge through a book, through a course, through a seminar, or you could just freely give it away. And because knowledge is so easily accessible, if you freely give it away, people will begin to, you know, think of you as the source of knowledge. Um, so that could be one way that you can be indispensable um, with your connections. Yep. Yeah, knowledge is everywhere, and, and some people try to hide it or protect it, and uh, that really does you no good. <laughs> oh. So then the uh, last section of the book was trading up and giving back. And, um, you know, you, you've been uh, in a coaching role. Do you have any uh, thoughts on giving back and, and how that applies to you? Um, well, yeah, obviously, again, and knowledge is everywhere and, and you want to make sure you're able to give that knowledge. And so, yeah, giving back on the knowledge that you have, I think is, is extremely important. It adds credibility to you. It, it helps build relationships. Again, it's all about adding value to other people. Um, you know, be, be interesting, give, give people, you know, good advice. And, and, uh, I think rewards will come from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed his expounding on what it looks like to find mentors and to be a mentor. Um, you know, you talked about the wrong way of doing it is like, like just going up to somebody and say, Hey, you should be my mentor. It'd be great. Mm -hmm. You know, like, what's in it for that mentor to, to pour into you, yep. you know, what, what's, what's their takeaway. So he talked about, you know, really learning about that person, expressing that you already know a lot about what their expertise is, expressing how you are going to uh, take advantage of it and actually implement it, you know, cause that could be a really high form of, of, uh, showing appreciation for what they're sharing is that you're actually implementing what they're sharing with you. Yep. Yeah. I think there's a lot of people that I, I hear it all the time or see it like on, uh, online or bigger pockets and Facebook and stuff is everybody wants this mentor, but they don't want to give anything in return, right? They're expecting somebody just to want to for free come and, you know, teach them everything they know because, well, sure. Why wouldn't you want to give back? Right. It's the goodness of your heart, but that's not really how 99.9% .9 of the people operate. The, it's, you have to be able to provide some sort of value. What's, what's that? Why, what's that reason why I want to work with you? Uh, you know, if, if I'm giving you free consulting and, you know, coaching and helping you along the way, are you really going to take it serious for one? And, and, uh, two is, you know, honestly, is it, is it going to just be wasting my time? And so 
there can be an exchange of money. There can be exchange of services. Um, you know, the, 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 but there's got to be some sort of value you can add to them. So you need to figure that out yourself. What kind of value can you add? The easiest value, of course, is money, right? Bringing, just paying them or bringing money into the, like their deals. Um, but there's other values you can add to them, uh, you know, helping them with some sort of need that they have in your business. And that's going to get you to where you want to go quicker. And it's going to be able to form a mentorship uh, kind of uh, situation for you. Yep. And I, one other thing about mentors that you talked about is, is not thinking about it as if you got to find the one mentor. Right. right. But instead think about like everybody around you is, is in some way can be a mentor to you. And if you just look at, you know, what's the value in everybody? How, how can you learn from what everybody's experiences and, and situations are? And, and likewise, how can you give back in that regard, in that same way? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, cool. What other points in the book, John, do you think are important? I've, I've got a few that I can start with if you want, or if you can, if you want to start. Uh, go ahead. So for me, um, he talked quite a bit about building your brand and, and creating kind of that power around your brand. Uh, he talks about reaching out to the right types of people, he talks about reaching out to different media sources. Um, you know, right now, while the book was written, podcasts weren't around, but right now podcasts are around. So you can reach out to people that do podcasts. You can reach out to people that write articles. Uh, I see people that are on like Forbes writing for Forbes and different, uh, different media outlets like that. Uh, I, I see people and hear about people that are on different radio channels, um, uh, different programs, uh, potentially even on the news. Um, so reaching out and kind of getting your story covered a little bit is definitely uh, of help of making sure you're again, building your own brand, your personal brand and creating buzz around kind of who you are and what your interests are. Yeah, that was an interesting part of the book too. I haven't, I don't think in the past I've thought about reaching out to reporters and pitching them a story. Um, so it was interesting. Um, I don't know if it yet applies to me, but, but at some point I might take advantage of that where, and it's good to think about it uh, ahead of time, you know, as you build your brand, how could this be, how could you build the buzz? You know, yeah. the, how could you build a story that would excite a reporter and their, you know, whatever their media is. Yep. Yep. Um, the other thing too, that uh, obviously you talked about is, uh, is having dinner parties and having parties like that and having people, you know, come to whether it's your house or, you know, a, a restaurant or a place of business or whatever it is. He talks about the power of these dinner type parties. And he even talks about just simple, like how, how some very simple, easy dinner parties, they don't even have to be extravagant. Most people don't really care. Uh, you could do a very simple, easy kind of dinner party. You could even do like a picnic type party. Um, at a, at a shoot at a park and it, it wouldn't have to be that expensive. So some people think they got to go all out and they go, well, geez, I don't have that much money to be able to take people to a fancy restaurant or hire a caterer or whatever it is. But he just talks about well, the importance of getting people together, get some, you know, like I said, you could go, you could go meet at a park and, and even have like a picnic type deal or, or, or have a you know grill or whatever. And uh, I think the funny thing, you know, it was kind of funny. He, he, he likes wine. Um, and so he said, just make sure you have a couple really good bottles of wine to, to get people uh, uh, into the party. <laughs> so, yep. Yeah. And I think that's where this book could really apply not only to business professionals, but just anybody. Cause you know, if you think about it, life in general is just about having good relationships. Yep. Um, and so there's so many key uh, points in this, 
that you can apply and, and just is to improve your relationship. So definitely, you know, had a conversation with the wife about, you know, we've got to have more people over and, um, yep. you know, and be intentional about it. Um, make sure that we're always trying to get to know more people. It's, it's good for our personal relationships and it's good for business. So. Yep. Yep. Look, we're all busy and uh, it's easy to just push things to the side. But the fact of the matter is you have, you have to eat dinner. Um, so why not eat dinner with some other people and, uh, and make it a, a little bit, you know, of a relationship building experience. So um, you're definitely going to get to know people more when you start inviting them over for dinner and uh, stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. yep. Um, you know, despite the title of the book, I was surprised how little it talked about food. Yeah. You're right. 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 Yeah. No, it was, it, it's all about, you know, how do you, how do you truly build relationships that are going to be powerful that are not, not only going to help, you but help other people and and create something of value for everybody involved uh, and I think that was the underlying you know most important part about the book is that's that's kind of what they really were focusing on is how do we build powerful relationships that are good for everyone involved yep um yeah. Anything else that you really liked or took from the book that you want to mention, John, before we wrap it up? Um, you know, there's, it's a really deep book there. It, it goes deep on a lot of different topics. Uh, I think people should just go out and listen or read it themselves. Um, yeah. um, I guess my biggest takeaway is just to be intentional about being interested in other people. Yep. and making sure that I have value to bring um, to the conversation. One of the biggest things that I, I really need to focus on myself um, is, is the power of a person's name. And so when, for, for me, when I meet somebody, I'm very, I, can, I remember a face very, very well. Like I can remember faces of somebody I've met one time, you know, five years ago, and I, maybe just said, you know, a couple words to them. I'll remember that face, but I won't remember their name. And that's, there's a very, it's very powerful to be able to remember somebody's name because that's a personal thing. So when somebody is, you know, talking to you and you don't know their name, that just, it, I think for one, it shows a little bit of disrespect to it. It just doesn't really help. Uh, build that relationship. They don't feel important at all if you don't know who they are. So their power in, in knowing people's names. I, there was a one of my daughter's friends. Uh, every time I would see him, he would say, you know, hey, Todd. How's it going, Jay? Sorry, I'm not going to say his full name, but um, he would say his he would say his name. Um, and that would then remind me about what is who who he was, you know, and he did that probably for the first five or six times I saw him. He always said, "Hey," and then his name, and so if, you know that that's really cool. That helps other people remember your name, and that gets them to you know potentially say what their name is too, um, but. You know, he talked about Bill Clinton writing names down. Um, he had his little address book he carried around with him. And, uh, you know, he would, he would write people down. He'd write their names down. He'd write, you can even write some interest things about them. Yeah, that's a really great thing for even, I know I'm a visual learner, a visual rememberer. And, and so, um, you know, it's great when people have name tags uh, and if they don't, you know, carrying around a little notebook is not a bad way to, to uh, make sure that solidifies in your brain there. Yep. Yep. And so trying to say their name several times. I just, I, for me, I need to personally work on it more. I need to be very intentional about it because it's definitely not a strong suit of mine. Like I said, I can remember a person's face, 
but remembering their name and putting that to their face is the most important thing. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Agree. Cool. All right. Well, for those of our listeners and viewers, we definitely like your input. If you've read this book or listened to it, let us know what were your biggest takeaways. You can go ahead and comment on the YouTube episode. You can comment in our Facebook page. And uh, while you're at it, go ahead and leave us a rating and review on iTunes. We'd love to get your feedback there and know that you're out there listening. Awesome, John. Well, I appreciate it. Um, and hey, man, make every day a Saturday. You too. Hey, thanks for listening to the show. A couple things before we go. Again, go on to our Facebook page, Pillars of Wealth. We'd love to have you on there. Go on to iTunes, give us a rating and review, and subscribe to the show. Also, um, you know, don't forget, reach out to me if you want any help with uh, potentially growing your business, and reach out to John Styles to help you buy or sell real estate. Thanks for listening. We appreciate it. Have a fantastic the rest of the day, and as I say, make every day a Saturday. 